Okay, uh, the next topic is subordination. Um, change of that is change from, of state directly from uh, solid to gas or vice versa. Okay, now um, this is um, basically a summary of the process. Okay, um, <coughs> now. The process of uh, changing from solid to liquid is called melting of fusion. Then from liquid to gas, it is called boiling or vaporization. From gas to liquid is called condensation. And then from solid, no, sorry, from liquid to solid is called freezing, right? Now, uh, here we can also call it as um, solidification, okay? Solidification. Now, there are some there are some um, times where solids can directly change to gas or gas directly change to solid. Right? Now, um, for example, we can say uh, like we are not in balls. Right? Okay. And we have ammonium chloride. And you have um, camphor. Okay. So um, all these things, they changes from solid to gas, right? Now, uh, when it changes directly from solid to gas, it is called um, sublimation, right? Sublimation. Now, when the reverse happens, okay, when the reverse happens as well, that is also known as sublimation. Now. Uh, example of uh, gases changing directly to solid will be that of solid car carbon dioxide. We call it dry ice, right? Dry ice, right? That is one example. Okay. So um, matter changing directly from solid to gas or gas to solid is known as sublimation, right? Now, effect of change of temperature, sorry, pressure. Um, See, um, this usually in, involves uh, changing of gas to liquid. Okay, here what you usually do is you simply compress the gas and then cool it at the same time, right? Now, um, if you see in gases, there are spaces. Okay, there are large spaces between the particles. So there is a scope for them to come together, right? So when you compress it, what is um, Basically, what they're doing is uh, you are just forcing to uh, forcing the particles to come together, right? So uh, that is compression. Now, um, cooling. Cooling is uh, just simply decreasing the uh, amount of kinetic energy in the particles. So the when the kinetic energy is um, decreased. Um, the speed of the particles also decreases. So they come together closer, okay, um, till a point where they become liquids, okay. Now, uh, evaporation. So what is evaporation? Evaporation is nothing but the change of liquid to gaseous state, okay, at a temperature that is below the boiling point, right. Um, see here, now, um, please take note of this, that Evaporation and vaporization is not the same, okay? Uh, so, because as far as temperature is con concerned in evaporation, it is below the boiling point, right? And um, the, uh, vaporization usually uh, takes place at the boiling point, right? The common thing here is that it's changing from gaseous state, no, uh, liquid state to gaseous state, but the temperature is the distinction here, okay? Take note of that. 
Now, um, coming to factors affecting evaporation. So, uh, it is a surface phenomenon. Okay, it takes place on the surface. Greater the surface area, greater is the rate of evaporation. So, uh, for example, um, just take the case of a cloth being dry, right? Now, if the cloth is um, if the cloth is um, crushed and dried, that means the water particles, okay, the molecules are no. Uh, since the since it is um, crushed, there is less surface area. So the lesser the surface area, um, lesser the particles are exposed to the um, Uh, the environment, right? So uh, here, what happens is the um, evaporation is lesser. But when the cloth is spread, it, when it is spread out, then the uh, molecules are um, more molecules are ex exposed. Okay, so there is more um, uh, evaporation. In that case, then evaporation increases with increase in temperature. With the increase in with, with the increase of temperature, more number of particles get kinetic energy, okay, to go into the vapor state. Now this is just a repetition. Uh, see, um, we all know that uh, particles are kinetic. No, particles are um, continuously moving. And when the temperature increases, that heat, that heat energy is converted into kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy increases. Okay, and when on increasing the kinetic energy, there comes a time where the kinetic energy becomes much stronger than the forces of attraction, right? The intermolecular forces of attraction. So it changes its state from liquid state to vapor state. Okay. Now, humidity, the greater the humidity, lesser is the rate of evaporation. Now here, see, humidity is nothing but the amount of water vapor present in the air, right? Now, uh, the air around us cannot hold more than a definite amount of water vapor at a given temperature, right? Now, just consider two pictures. Let's, let's say the dot, dot, dots are the amount of water vapor, right? When there is more water vapor, Okay, in the atmosphere at that particular temperature, the uh, acceptance of um, more water vapor is restricted. Okay, meaning uh, the atmosphere will not accept, will not just um, simply, you know, accept the excess water vapor, right? Because uh, the atmosphere has become already saturated right okay now when there's less molecules in that no sorry less uh, water vapor in the atmosphere there is more acceptance of water vapor so in low humidity evaporation is um, more okay so if the amount of water in the air is already high the rate of water rate of evaporation decreases Now coming to wind speed, with increasing wind speed, rate of evaporation increases. Okay, this is because the particles on the surface gets blown away by the wind. Okay, for example, when you keep your uh, wet clothes under the fan, it dries faster, right? So that can be an example. Okay. Now, um, how does evaporation cause cooling? See, um, <coughs> here. Just consider this example. When the doctor is going to give you a shot of injection, right? What does he do? He uh, takes spirit in a cotton ball and then rubbing on the area where he is going to give you the uh, shot of injection, right? Now here, when the spirit is applied, uh, what happens is you feel a very cool sensation, right? Now that is because the spirit is evaporating. Now you know that for evaporation, um, Heat is required, right? So um, here, for, 
no, not energy is required, right? So from where is that energy coming from? Your heat, your body has heat. So um, when the heat is absorbed from the body, that particular body, okay, uh, the spirit absorbs that heat in the form of latent heat, okay, simply to ev evaporate from, change its state from liquid state to uh, gaseous state. So when that happens, that area of the uh, skin on which the spirit is applied, you feel that um, coolness, okay, that cool sensation. So um, that is the uh, cooling effect of, that is how the cooling effect of uh, evaporation take, takes place, okay. Just consider it this way, we have a system, okay. We have a system um, that has got temperature. All right, let's say here. Now, when some um, when evaporation takes place, okay. See uh, <coughs> the um, water, let's say, absorbs the heat from this system. Okay, and so if the heat is absorbed, right. If the heat is absorbed from this system, let's say the heat is absorbed from this system. So, if the heat is absorbed from this system, then basically what we're doing is cooling it, right? Because heat is heat energy is taken out from this, okay, from the system, right? So, um, that energy is absorbed by the water. In the form of latent heat, and then um, that water changes to liquid state. So here, cooling is occurring. Okay, so uh, that that is just the um, <coughs> effect, right? Now, um, why should we wear cotton clothes in summer? Okay, now see. Um, Cotton plots, they are good absorbance of sweat, right? So when we sweat, they absorb the sweat and then exposes the sweat um, so that it, um, evaporation becomes easier, right? Now when evaporation takes place, okay, uh, heat is absorbed, okay, both from our body, and the surrounding, right? So uh, when it evaporates, um, some heat is also absorbed from our body, okay, in the form of latent heat, which uh, gives us the cooling effect. Now, um, the last um, topic, why do we see water droplets on the outer surface surface of a glass containing ice cold water? Now here, um, this is a very usual phenomenon. Okay. Now suppose you have a glass of water that is ice cold. Okay. Now what happens is, see there is there are um, water vapor. Okay, water in the gaseous state. Right. Water in the gaseous state. Now uh, this. No, what am I saying? There are um, water in the gaseous state that is in the form of water vapor in the atmosphere. Now, when they come into contact with this cold surface, okay, this is ice cold, so, so the surface will be cold, okay. So when they come into contact, um, the water vapor coming in contact loses energy, okay. Basically, kind of energy now. So as they lose the kinetic energy, um, they tend to change its state from um, gas to liquid. Right. So you so as it changes its state from gas to liquid, um, it becomes. You see the water droplets. Right, 
So um, that is just the thing, uh, which is very simple. So I hope uh, it is okay with all of you. Okay? Uh, just simply consider it this way. See, from solid to liquid, what do you have to do? You have to increase the energy, right? Of the particles how do you do that by heating it okay. then you keep on heating it will change to gas this is just the reverse okay 